But with Father Damien, who must have expected this, nothing happens, no miracles, no changes, no return on his investment of time and energy, and no answers to his prayers. He was just waiting, it seemed. And so he must have doubted his call. You know, I really thought God wanted me to do this, but this can't be right. This isn't how this is supposed to turn out. I must have misread the signs. And so does he finally give up, I wonder? Is that what that leaving was? Was it really a giving up, or was it trying to figure out what had happened in a reorientation of his life, and then all of a sudden the surprising and the unexpected comes? I don't interpret this that God gave him the leprosy. If God thought Father Damien needed the leprosy, he had 12 years to give it to him. Why would he wait all that time? That doesn't make sense to me and probably doesn't to you. God didn't give him the leprosy. But he stuck it out for 12 years exposing himself to this. And that must be how this happened. Now skip over to the story from a scripture from the gospel, the parable of the early church. See, when they talked about the bridegroom coming, this was the church's interpretation of the second coming of Jesus. Most of you have heard about this. But Jesus is supposed to come again, and when Jesus comes again, all the evils of the world will be wiped out, and there'll be peace and happiness, and God's kingdom, this place of peace and justice and happiness where everybody has enough, this will come to exist. And um, those who don't believe this are those who have lived a life of selfishness regardless of any faithfulness. Those people will not have any power anymore. The early church believed this was happening right away. And you still hear this if you go on TV and watch some of the TV preachers. They talk endlessly about all the signs that Jesus is coming real soon. So don't bother with your investments and don't, you know, don't buy a new car because Jesus is coming real soon. And the fact that uh, we are in this economic crisis, of course, is a sign that but so was the Civil War, and so were the plagues, and so on, and blah, 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 blah. There's always something for us to say, ah, this is the sure sign that Jesus is coming again. But Jesus doesn't come for 2,000 years. Jesus doesn't come. There's a long history of people who, when they believed this hard enough, they just sat down and waited. They didn't do anything. They just sat down and waited, and waited for another one of history's major events to come and go and not see Jesus. Surprise. <laughs> no second coming. The final victory is not yet over evil. There's no establishment of the kingdom of peace and health and justice and happiness for all. We're still all struggling, some of us more than others. So we have to look at this parable some other way. Uh, in our own context, in our own moment in history, the bridegroom, we're told, was a long time coming. And here is the key to understanding this parable and one of the most important lessons of life and faith. God's time is not our time. God comes when God comes, not when we want God to come. God does the things that God needs to do, not in the time that we think they needed to be done, but in God's time, with many surprises, both good and bad. And faith, the spiritual life, gives us strength to be ready to take life as it comes. It's, it's no guarantee that timing is going to speed up or slow down and that the things we want are going to come in the time that we want them. Faith only says to us, be strong, be confident. God is with you. And that has to be enough. The wise virgins were told in the story they had their lamps ready, expecting the bridegroom and then the banquet, but they also had oil. And that oil symbolizes a lot of things. The oil symbolizes the, the ability to seize the day while we're waiting. The ability to be loving towards our friends and our neighbors each day when the opportunity presents itself. And not be passive or wrapped up in speculation. 
a lot of comedy is based on speculation, you know. A lot of comedy comes because the person in the comedic situation is speculating about the future and speculating what's going to happen. Is there anything funnier than a hypochondriac, for instance? who sees every little thing and, oh my God, it's cancer, it's going to be this, it's going to be that, and all these kinds of things happen. And the people laugh about this. You remember, those of you who are Seinfeld fans, you remember George? <laughs> Everything that happened to George, it was going to be cat catastrophic because he believed that God would not let him be successful, you see. That any time he had any success, poor George, God was going to pull a rug out from under him. And so he was a hypochondriac, and we laugh at that. I know people like that. I've had people like that come in my office, not here, of course, but in other churches, <laughs> come here and talk to me about this. And you know people like this. What do you think this is? Look at this mark. Uh, I think it's a skin discoloration. Those of you who are not old enough, especially you teenagers, yeah, you, this is something to look forward to. As your body gets older, these things change, and you look at them, and you go to the doctor and say, what is this here? What? It's nothing. You're just getting old. Oh, I love to hear that. You know? <laughs> oh, really? I mean, shouldn't we be doing so? No, no, there's nothing to do about it. <sighs> it's hard, isn't it? Life is hard. <laughs> but the symbol of the oil is that these people are prepared. Whatever comes along, they can put more oil in the lamp. They can keep light around them with this oil. The foolish virgins brought lamps, but no oil, nothing extra, because things were going to happen within their time period. I'm coming here now, and by this time, the bridegroom will be here, and then there's the banquet, and the oil will last. So it's not a problem. Everything is on time but the time is according to us, isn't it? It's not general on time. It's not God's time. It's my time. That's when this should happen. The oil represents the depth of faith. These smart virgins had equipped themselves for the long haul. I look at some of you, and especially those of you who are now in your 80s and approaching 90, and some of you in your 90s, and hear the stories you tell, and I realize what a long haul it's been for you, and some of the amazing things you have done, and some of the terrible things you have endured. And yet when you talk about them, they certainly affected your life, but you don't talk about these things in a depressed sort of, I got roll, just steamrolled by this thing, you know? We learned something from it. We did what we had to do. This is a phrase quite often that you older uh, folks use. We did what we had to do. Very simple and absolutely the truth. Father Damien did what he had to do. He ministered faithfully. He had lots of oil, I guess, because he went for 12 years w without the light shining around him very much, but his own light was shining in his heart, hoping that he would succeed with his people. And then the success came in a way that you and I don't think is a very good way. But it was the way of life. And although it would have been better, we think, if Father Damien had not been uh, affected by the leprosy, what about the people who were lepers? What about those people who said, now this man is on our same journey, and we're sorry about it. We're not glad that he got the leprosy, but we understand his pain, and we can minister to him as well as him ministering to us.